Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now before we go into today's broadcast, I know today is Thursday, praise God. I want to specially invite you for our um, fellowship meeting. This evening in the city of Abuja by 6 p.m. If you live in the city of Abuja and we've been a blessing to you, you can join us physically. And also you can join us virtually if you're outside the city of Abuja. Our meetings are streamed on Facebook. So you can join us during uh, that meeting this evening and just be blessed and enjoy fellowship with God's people. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? I'm ready. So let's join our faith together right now. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus expect a miracle today you know we've been talking about the wisdom of god's word now every time i meditate on this i it gets big inside me now i know we've touched on several things trying to get the wisdom of God in seeing the character of God. And God spoke to us in Jeremiah that said, I'm the God who loves to exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. We've been talking about that even till yesterday. You know, I've, I love to exercise loving kindness. Now, every word that comes out of God's mouth is laced with wisdom. No matter for what reason it comes out. Sometimes his word comes out for rebuke. Sometimes his word comes out in, um, in, um, in, to edify you. But then every time words come out of his mouth is wisdom. See? So sometimes we don't examine the wisdom that is in that word and we and, and that's the thing you see many times you hear me say the word of god or the bible is not for us to argue rather it's for us to believe now why do i keep saying that sis because some people read the bible for arguments when i say argument not even arguing with one another arguing with themselves no we read the bible to believe it and when I say believe it, it doesn't mean throw your mind away. No, that, see, you can't even believe without your mind. See, oh, the Bible says with the heart man believe it. What do you understand by with the heart man believe it? It means with your spirit you believe. No, you see, these, these are areas where uh, because of lack of understanding, people go astray. When the Bible says with the heart man believes, says it's talking about with your mind. Yes, your heart is your mind. So what is your spirit? Now, the, the, the born again child of God does not have a separate spirit from the Holy Spirit. Now, this might be strange to someone, <laughs> praise God. There is no two spirits in a, in, a, in a human being. The Holy Spirit said to my spirits, uh -uh. believe me, no. I've done an extensive study on this. I've taken time to fast and pray concerning this matter. I do that a lot. And that's why um, we can be different in, 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 in some things. See, I don't take a stand on anything until I've, I'm sure I've heard from the Lord concerning that thing. I can fast and pray for three days because of one scripture I did not understand. That's what I do with my time. <laughs> God. Now, not, now, not because I'm doing it for scripture's sake. I'm doing it because... This life will be called is to live. In living this life, you read the Bible. See, now when you read the Bible, you read it with sense because you have a brain. And so there are things you read and it doesn't make sense or it doesn't seem to make sense. So then you ask, so why is it here? What is God trying to say? Is it the translators that made an error? Is it me that do not understand the culture and the language? See? So what do you do in such a situation? You go to the Lord. Because why am I reading the Bible? I feel in my heart that 
the Lord is going to communicate with me through the things he has said and it's documented here okay so I read the stories and then I'm getting wisdom then I see something that doesn't add up I saw it didn't add up because my brain is working and so instead of getting into confusion uh, now I do a lot of study so there are things I would tell you so easily and uh, you may go where, why is he saying that I'm coming from a long place so sometimes I, I see some people want to go to Hebrew I want to go to Greek I found out that even though Hebrew and the Greek they don't help I'm telling you the truth they will even confuse it more so sometimes when you see people say the Greek the Greek version the Greek is as simple as saying the English version yes because there are writings that were not written in Greek there are writings that were not written in Hebrew see there are writings that were written in Aramic and secondly uh, English and Hebrew English and Greek they are not the same there are words you can never find in English so in trying to break down the meaning from Hebrew to English you lose the meaning no matter how hard they try you lose the meaning because you miss the intent of the preacher so when people go into things like you need to study the scripture contextually I've told you there are Bible teachers and then there are word teachers see so if we're doing Bible teaching we can enter into the English of it we can enter into the language of it but if we go into word all we're dealing with is what is God communicating here <laughs> you see that that's the difference so when someone starts telling you the Greek and the Hebrew he's not really telling you the mind of God the mind of God is received by the Spirit of God Jesus himself said the Holy Spirit would teach you all things so having Greek and Hebrew I have all those materials I've studied them but then I studied them and they didn't answer my questions until I realized the only one that can answer your questions is the one who was speaking and he is still alive and that corresponds with something Jesus said in John chapter 5 I want you to look at this scripture carefully and I remember the day I saw this scripture I literally sat on the floor and I was like how silly we have been in many many instances you see from that day I told myself I can never be deceived whether deliberately or uh, not deliberately by any minister any preacher any teacher I can never be deceived many years ago I saw the scripture so I'm going to read it to you it will bless you John chapter 5 and verse 39 into 40 Jesus was speaking here he was speaking to the Pharisees you remember Jesus has healed the man uh, by the pool of backside but uh, baptized Bethesda praise God he healed the man and, and this this Pharisees were just up about and why why you carry your bed on the Sabbath day and they got talking and talking and Jesus made a statement in replying them he made a statement in verse 39 John chapter 5 Jesus said you search the scriptures now before I saw this let me tell you something before I saw this I've known about the scripture and I knew it most of us started studying or started reading Bible from the King James old King James version so in old King James version you will see this written as search the scriptures so I've known the scripture or this this um, verse this verse 39 as the Lord is telling us to search the scriptures for many years that grew up, you know, as long as I was sensible enough, I've been reading the scriptures. See, as long as I've been sensible, as long as I began to understand, I can think as far back as, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, 
<laughs> you understand yes oh. so i've done corporately read the bible maybe up to corporately now that's many many really young corporately maybe like four or five times and then personally because i've done read the whole bible cover to cover like systematically genesis to revelation i've done that maybe up to seven times straight okay i'm not saying this to boast i'm just trying to tell you that how i've searched these things see so when i speak i'm not speaking as an ignorant person so for many years i saw this as jesus is telling us to search the scriptures so you must search the scriptures <laughs> you know i laugh like this because now that's the same this the way we think about a lot of things we take things out of context and the moment you miss the meaning everything is destroyed so when i got uh when we started going into several translations so I read the scripture again in New King James because now, especially the book of John. Oh, I'm sure I'm re I've studied the book of John over a hundred times. Just the book of John is, I think, is my best um, uh, author amongst all the New Testament. I think John is 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 my best author. I felt he knew something. Um, would I say the other disciples did not know, or he was bold about something? that the other disciples were not bold about. Bold to believe, bold to confess. Because when you read his writings, you can see that this guy knew something. Either the others didn't know or the others didn't pay attention to. But Jesus said it in their presence. And I was reminded by the Holy Spirit recently that you need to understand that all the disciples were not always with Jesus all the time what i mean by that it's not like everywhere jesus go to 12 they were all there there were times jesus just had between peter james and john okay so there are things meetings jesus will attend and several of the disciples will not be there but most likely john was in every place with jesus now you know what i mean by in every place let's okay let me let me put it in the right context most places with jesus so john must have heard a lot and number two even from his writings it appears he he was very close to jesus because he was daring enough okay so like in on the table during the last supper when jesus said one of you will betray me and they were all wondering who who peter had to signal now they were all sitting on the same table with jesus but peter had to signal john and told john to ask jesus on that table see so peter understood from that gesture peter understood that even if if we can't get out something from jesus john will be able to get it out and so john whispered to it was a whisper he didn't say it publicly he asked jesus who see jesus spoke one of you and john asked who and jesus told john watch he didn't say it to everybody he told john he said watch the person I dip my hand in with this bread, this bread and give it to, is the one. And Jesus took the bread, dipped it in whatever it was, maybe stew or whatever they were using there, and handed it over to Judas. And John saw that. Now, everybody did not understand what happened, but John did. See, So John knew, and, and prior to that time, I believe John had had conversations with Jesus, because if you read... Uh, john's writing jesus john had written and said jesus from the beginning knew who it was that would betray him so all that thought of it could have been anybody no it couldn't have been anybody uh, let me let me make it harder for you jesus chose from the beginning one that should betray him that was the purpose of judas in that ministry his ministry his purpose was to fulfill that prophecy, to betray Jesus. Now that's why um, I, I, Judas was not a child of God. He was not born of God. He was not. He was just not a child of God. I'm trusting God. 
one day, one of these days, we'll go into these teachings uh, to, to open your eyes because there, is, there are a lot of things people don't know. There are a lot of things we touch here and here, but then we've not really realized how important they are in our lives. It's not every human being. You've heard me say that many times. If not every human being you see that is a child of God, it's not even every pastor you see that is a child of God. There are pastors preaching, even doing miracles, but they are not children of God. Ah, but they are born again. They speak in tongues. <laughs> you think so. But they are not. They are not. And Jesus himself said it. He said, on that day, I will say to those people, I never knew you. So Judas fell in that category. And Jesus knew that before he chose him. So there was no salvation for Judas. There is no way Judas could have gotten saved. Now, this is controversial. People would say, ah, can you say that? There are people, forget it. There are people, there is nothing even God can do about their salvation. It's closed. They cannot be saved. They can't. Now, they can go to church. They can follow you to do all the things you do. But they cannot, never, it's impossible for them to be saved. Bit controversial, but true. You will get to find out. <laughs> Praise God. So, I saw the scripture in the New King James Version. And it actually answered a question I had reading the Old King James Version. So I'll read it to you. It says, You search the scriptures, for in them, that's in the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. So, there is the assumption that in the scriptures you will find eternal life, right? And these are they which testify of me. So the scriptures testify of Jesus. Everything the scripture is talking about is Jesus, okay? Now it says, look at what Jesus said next. But you are not willing to come to me that ye may have life wonderful you search the scriptures thinking inside the scriptures you will find eternal life but jesus here is saying that the scriptures don't give you life huh yeah the scriptures don't give you life ah but he said for they are life to them that find them and hell to all their flesh what what is life to the, them that find them not the scriptures he says attend to my words now here's what jesus is saying he said you were searching the scripture remember who he was talking to he was talking to the pharisees you are searching the scriptures because you think in the knowledge of the scriptures you will have eternal life but the problem is these scriptures are testifying of me that's all they do but it is for you to come to me and have the life so who gives life not the scriptures jesus is the one who gives life and so hey, but jesus is no more here and he has gone to heaven so we have to know when jesus was living he himself said to us i i will not leave you comfortless I will come to you. Then he says, the Father will send the Holy Spirit to you. What does the Holy Spirit do? He said he will take of mine and he shall give it unto you. What does Jesus have for us? I am come that they might have life and have it in abundance. What does Jesus have for us? He says, the words that I speak, that I speak, not that you read, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What is Jesus saying? You come to me. Haven't read the scriptures, you close the book and then you go to him. If you don't get to him, I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, no life. If you like cram all the scriptures in your head and be throwing it out anyhow, you know, you say, what is Nahum, Nahum chapter 1 and verse 2? You just throw it out. It will not give you life. This is what has caused the frustration of a lot of people. But the Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, what has Jesus said to you? 
If that is not included in the matter, I am sorry, no life yet. Our time is up, praise God. But this is just simple truth. Hard to chew, but this is just the truth. And I pray the Lord give you understanding today. End this whole religion thing you're doing and get into the real thing. Praise God. Father, we bless you. I ask, Lord, that you will speak to every heart that is listening. Let a new relationship begin with you and hearing your voice that they may begin to assess life. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Praise God forevermore. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.